2 Timothy chapter number 1, uh, Paul's last letter, uh, he is now in prison, in chains, uh, he's not coming out, he will graduate to heaven shortly, and so he is um, uh, writing his last letter to his crown jewel young man that he has trained for ministry. This has more a style of free-flowing style of a last letter to a friend. And while it was written to a pastor, there is tons of stuff in this book for you and for I. Um, I want to remind you that 2 Timothy, 2 Peter, and Jude are the three books of the New Testament that have a lot to say about the, t uh, about the times in which we live, uh, Christianity 2,000 years down the road, and some good things and some not so good things, and how we are to conduct ourselves. In Paul's writings to Timothy, uh, there is considerable use of terms like warrior, soldier, athlete, uh, commitment, uh, the gist being that um, uh, times are going to come when a lot of folks not want to go to, are not going to want to hear all of the Bible and, and we honestly feel that we're probably in that time. Uh, I mean, it's to the point now that when I visit, uh, sometimes people just come right out and say to me, uh, all that teaching and preaching at your church, church is boring and I don't want to go there. Uh, you know, that's problematic. Shouldn't be that way. Uh, believe I love the Word of God, amen? Come on. And so, um, this is Paul's last letter. All last words from dying people are important. Yes. When we gather at the bedside, either at home or in the hospital, of a dying loved one, we cling to all their words and, and we remember them. And so these are the last words of the great apostle Paul. Uh, and so uh, very important. Uh, I'm not going to treat this book in outline form, though uh, some men have outlined it, but uh, I really think the best way to treat this book is as a letter from an old preacher who knows he's fixing to die uh, to a young preacher. And uh, so that's the way I'm going to treat it. I'm gonna, this is what I'm going to just walk through verse by verse without an outline. Because actually every verse is nearly a sign. So 2 Timothy chapter number 1, we stopped at verse number 12. So we're going to begin at verse number 13. And it is something that Paul puts really heavy emphasis on in 1 Timothy, in 2 Timothy, and in the book of Titus. Uh, hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. In other words, the Word of God. The Word of God. Now, uh, Timothy did not have it all like we do today. This really, like we have today, that really didn't happen until about 1500 when Gutenberg in Germany invented the printing press. Before that, people had whatever they could get their hands on. Uh, it, it wasn't until about 300 AD till what we have today was even declared all to be the Bible, and then a lot more years before it finally got to where we have this. Literally,
Secondly, especially up to the end of the first century, 180, the only way that people could get a, a copy of the Word of God, for example, all the pastoral epistles, uh, Paul sent them to one church, they read it, they made a copy for themselves, and then passed it on to the next church, who made a copy for themselves, and passed it on to the next church. And the Lord God who inspired the Bible has preserved it for us to this day. Let me tell you something, folks. If we do not, if we don't believe that today we have an authoritative copy of the Word of God, we're in bad Amen. trouble. Amen. I mean, we're in bad trouble. Uh, and uh, so... Uh, a fundamental, down-to-earth, basic, God-given conviction that this really is God's Word is absolutely foundation to the Christian faith and to the Christian church. Because this is our message. So, uh, I think more than anything in the world, Paul, in, in the last three letters he wrote, puts a major emphasis on this is the Word of God. Pastor, teacher, deacon, whoever you are, teach it, teach it, teach it. And we're supposed to teach it from generation to generation to generation to generation. I admit that we have a problem with that today. And uh, I'm, I'm not here to analyze it. I'm just saying, folks, we got to be right by the Bible because if the, even in the Old Testament, David said, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Yeah, amen. If we don't have this, we're out of business, folks. So, again, this super emphasis, hold fast to former sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is due. Uh, let me show you something. 2 Timothy 2.15 to Timothy. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Let me show you something else. 2 Timothy 3, 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God, and let me say, let me, uh, without doing violence to scripture, let me say that the believer may be yeah. perfect means complete. Truly furnished unto all good works. Uh, and let me back up. Uh, 1 Timothy 4, uh, 13. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to, to teaching, to exhorting, to doctrine. Uh, meditate upon these things. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, etc., etc., etc. The, the pinnacle of the thing that Paul wanted these young preachers to learn is you build on the foundation of the Word of God. If you don't build on that foundation, you're not building on anything. Because every other foundation will crumble. Uh, let me show you something way back over there. In Matthew chapter 7. This is how the Lord concluded the Sermon on the Mount. Matthew 7, 24. Therefore, whosoever hear these sayings of mine, that's the Word of God, and doeth them, obeys the Word of God. I will liken him unto a wise man who built his house upon a rock. The rock is Jesus Christ. Amen. The house can be your life, can be your family, can be your marriage, can be the church, can be the school, can be the nation. Whosoever builds is a, uh, on, on Jesus Christ and his word he is wise and the rain is set. Now the storm's going to come and, and folks, uh, America's in a storm. America's in a storm. Uh, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not. For it was found upon a rock. Jesus Christ incarnate, Jesus Christ, the
the word. Amen. And then look at the other side. Everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell. And great was the fall thereof. Which to build our lives, our ministries, our, our kids, our families, our mates, our, our everything on the Word of God. It just is not good what we're doing as a nation. I can give you hundreds of illustrations. I'll just give you one. You may, if you watch the news, you already heard this. Uh, a week ago, uh, last earlier this week, in the Dallas City Council, they voted to put up a gay pride flag over the city with the American flag and the state flag to honor uh, those people. Now, you know those people need the Lord. Amen? Amen. You do know that. They need the Lord. Folks, uh, you can't go against God's Word and it come out good. You just, you know, and I'm not mad at anybody, but you just can't do that. Uh, and uh, we are promoting things that God says don't. And some of the things that God says do, uh, we've, we've outlawed. Folks, you can't do that. Um, the last words of the, what I just read, and great was the fall of it. So, back to my text. Second Timothy. Chapter 1, verse 13. Hold fast to form of sound words. By the way, have you thought about the word form? Form means order. Order. There's an order. Uh, you have to study the Bible in an orderly manner. Revelation was progressive. Some words, truth, which thou hast heard of me, the apostles uh, primarily gave the New Testament in faith and in the faith. This is not just faith for salvation, the gospel. This is the faith, the body of revealed truth and love. We're commanded to speak the truth in love. The Bible is not one of those books that you beat somebody over the head with. It, that will not work. You must present the, the truth in a spirit of love which is in Christ Jesus. Let me uh, just jump ahead uh, uh, a few verses. Uh, I, yeah, I'm probably not going to get this far. Uh, let, here's what Paul said about how the Bible is to be taught, not only by the preacher, but by all of us. In uh, chapter 2, verse number 24, the servant of the Lord must not strive. You do no good presenting the Word of God argumentatively. You don't argue about it. You have to be gentle. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness. The spirit in which you present the work of the Lord, the Word of God, the church, whatever, has to be done gently in a loving, kind spirit. In the spirit of Christ, and that's not aggressive or angrily or pushy, we're not the Holy Spirit, folks. We're messengers. Amen. Gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient. I'm telling you, there, there is nothing takes patience like the Lord's work. It, it just, my goodness. And I said this last week and I'll repeat it, but gentle unto all men, apt to teach. 
One of the ways that you will know that God really has called someone to be a pastor, deacon, teacher is they have the ability to teach. If God calls someone to present the Word of God, God will make that person fit to do it. Now, that's not speaking against seminaries or other schools of training. I'm just saying, if God calls someone, God will make sure that person is equipped. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. Now, if somebody's against God, against the Bible, you don't beat them over the head with a big black Bible. You do that in meekness. Paul said something to the Corinthian church. It, it, it's a wonderful verse. They were so proud of their... Uh, the Corinthian church was a very talented church. And they were so proud of their talent. And Paul wrote to me, he said this, What do you have that you haven't received? Folks, we don't have anything to brag about. We don't have anything to be proud about. Yes. Uh, if I know something, it's not that I'm so smart, it's that the Lord showed yes. it to me. It's Amen. that the Lord opened my heart. Amen. That's right. So we, we don't need to get upset with folks who don't know and don't want to know. Right. Meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. Now notice if, if God, for adventure, will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, Which leads me to say this one more thing, and I'll continue. You're going to deal with people about the Lord. Make sure that you're in the right spirit. That you're prayed up. That you've asked the Holy Spirit to speak through you. And then be gentle and be kind. Uh, you know, the Lord had to deal with some serious sinners uh, in his earthly ministry. He was always gentle. He was always kind. So, matter of fact, did you know, I wouldn't say he lost his temper, but the, but the one time that he just really told some folks how the cow ate the cabbage. And you know who that was? The lost Pharisees. That's the old lost preachers. It's the only one he ever, I guess, raised his voice to. Yeah, and called them some pretty serious names like foxes. But with sinning people, he was gentle and kind and sweet. By the way, wasn't somebody that way to you and I that initially drew us to the gospel? Amen. So, very important. All right. Uh, that good thing, the Word of God, which was committed unto thee, keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. Every one of us as believers, not just me in this pulpit, every one of us that are believers, we are appointed by God to keep and live out this book. Amen. This book is a sacred trust. And we're so blessed to live in a country where you can have one of these and people may not be comfortable with you carrying one around, but in this country you can still carry one and still have one. The tide on that is shifting, folks. A major book chain in America in the last week announced they will no longer carry Bibles in their bookstores because they are old history. So we're not moving in a very good direction with the Bible. But we're still free to have it and carry it and we must defend it. That good thing which is committed to us keep by the Holy Ghost which dwells in us. Now, first of all, every born again child of God has the living Holy Spirit of God in him. Uh, pray the Father, He shall send you another comforter, that He may abide with you forever. You're a Christian, you've got the Holy Spirit inside of you to help you. And if you've never read 1 Corinthians chapter number 2, it is the Holy Spirit in us that teaches us the Bible. Amen. Now, some personal notes from Paul 
to Timothy, this, not, this knowest that all they which are in Asia be turned away from me. <clears throat> of whom is Fidelis and Hermitinus? It is a fact of history. It is a fact in the Bible. Everybody loves a winner. Everybody will love somebody that's got a pocket full of money. But when your life goes into tribulation, most friends will leave you. It happened to the Apostle Paul. It happened to the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, I hate to say it, but sometimes even in the church. You take a stand for a right. Weaker Christians sometimes are things. Uh, Jimmy Nelson, one of our uh, one of our mission projects, uh, the mission work in Africa, the seminaries in Africa. Uh, he just had triple bypass surgery, and, and uh, he and I had a long talk a couple of days ago. We talked a long time. He he's going through that right now. He took a he took a stand on something and uh, and uh, and lost his piano player and her husband in the church. And he's the only piano player in the church. And the church is already really, really struggling. It's an old church. It's really struggling to keep it together. And of course, you know, he's just distraught to say the least, but it does happen. It does happen. The Lord give mercy unto the house of Onesiphorus, for he oft refreshed me and was not a Shame of my chains. Most will leave you, but God will have someone for you. God will have someone that will stand by you. God will have someone that will encourage you. And by the way, remember, Jesus is a friend that sticketh closer Amen. than a brother. Amen. For he hath said, I will never leave thee. I will never forsake thee, so that you may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I'm not going to be afraid of what men can do. Amen. But when he was in Rome, that would have been Paul's first imprisonment. He sought me out very diligently and found me. The Lord grant unto him, that he may find mercy of the Lord in that day, in how many things he ministered unto me at Ephesus, thou knowest very well. Some will leave you, but God always has someone that will stay. And if you will be a friend to the poor, to the hungry, to the hurting, to the downtrodden, what the Lord says, even if you just give somebody a glass of water in my name, I will reward you yeah. for that. Okay? Now, again, uh, chapter 2, uh, just a little more. Uh, again, to the preachers, but application to everybody. Thou therefore, my son, that's Timothy, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Grace is unmerited favor. One of the responsibilities that we have as believers is to grow in grace. 2 Peter 3.18, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me add to that Romans 10.17. So faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. As you feed spiritually on the word of God, you'll grow, you'll become a strong Christian. You'll have more grace about you. You'll have more faith in you. Uh, you will grow in the things of Christ. You will, be, you will grow more and more into the likeness of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Paul is encouraging Timothy to do that. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, they are, are again the word of God, commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. The great commission is win them, baptize them, teach them. This is my personal opinion. You don't have to believe it, but you just need to believe that I believe it. Okay? I think the third part of the great commission, I'm not sure that we're, we have or are doing a very good job in. I, I just, personal opinion. Uh, I, I, I don't know that, I don't think we produce
produced enough believers who are thoroughly, deeply grounded and are standing on the rock. That's the idea. I, I just, and you know, and I'm talking about myself, I'm guilty, I'm the disciple. And so, uh, uh, we have to bring up a new generation and teach them so that when we're gone, they carry on. They bring up a new generation and they teach them when they're gone. Verse 3, Thou therefore in your hardness is a good soldier of Jesus Christ. I said in my introduction a few minutes ago that Paul talks about the straining of an athlete, a soldier, enduring hardness, I have to tell you, I think we are making a, and I'm talking about Christendom in our nation as a whole, I think we're sending the wrong picture when we win people to the Lord and uh, we get them in on human programs and fun and entertainment and worldly things. Uh, there, there is, being a Christian is the greatest in the world, amen? amen? But nowhere does the Bible teach that this is supposed to be about fun and a good time and hip hip hooray. Though we do really enjoy what we do. I mean, I wouldn't do anything else and you wouldn't either. But I, I think we're downplaying the principle of what Jesus said. Yes, amen. Uh, no man can follow me except they take up the cross. Amen. Yes. That's what it says. Now I'm talking to folks that have been in church a long time. Everybody in this room, you've gone through some tough stuff in your life because you were a Christian. You've got kids that have walked away from it. You've lost friends over it. Uh, you've been isolated at the job. and they, You know, you've had to make hard decisions. This life for the believer is a life of toil, but the good is yet to come. Yes. Amen. When Jesus comes. Yes. Amen. So, endure hardness is a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Verse 4, no man that warreth and tangleth himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. First of all, uh, obviously, uh, primarily to those who give their life full-time to Christian service. In the most simple common denominator, what it just means is that has to be first. Yeah. That has to be first. The study of the Word of God, prayer, uh, spiritual ministry, feeding the sheep, must be first. Nothing can come between that and you and the Lord. Now there are people who used to say, see, you know, that means you can't even work a secular job. Well, I, that's not what it means because Paul more than once worked a secular job to support ministry. So it doesn't mean that. Let me give you a little history, okay? Can I, and, and we're almost out of time, but let me pass a little history on you. Until about I'm going to roundly say till about 1850 every believer understood that no believer gets involved in the political arena of secular government it's what done it's unheard of Christians fought godless government on their knees. Yep. Amen. There's a principle physically and spiritually a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. You take a whole barrel full of wonderful apples 
and you put one rock napkin in there. And all those good apples convert that rotten apple. No. Tell her around. You don't convert people jumping into the ungodly bed. You, the, the Christians make changes on their knees. Come on, folks. Come on. Yes, amen. Just tell it like it is. Just tell it like it is. Now, whether you vote, whether you are actively involved, that's between you and the Lord. I, I, I'm, I'm just telling you, it was unheard of for about 1,500 years. What we're now doing. You say, well, we, we got to we, we gotta influence. Yeah, on your knees. What does it say? Uh, we studied this. Not long ago, I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercession, uh, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority. And the result will be that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all God in his God's here. No man that warreth and tangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. Let me bring into that Matthew 6, 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. That is found in the same chapter in the Sermon on the Mount where Jesus said, but thou when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, shut the door, and pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. We fight our battles on our knees in our prayer closets. Okay, I have to stop. I've got a lot more to say, uh, but uh, somebody help me to remember. Pat, or trouble, somebody help me to remember. Uh, I stop chapter 2, verse number 4. Amen. Amen. Well, let's take a break. God bless you.